Hello there, and God be with you wherever you are. I've got some interesting practical and technical work I'll go through at the end, but many things to get to before. On the subject of how unconscious people are, I happen to see this photo. It's of a French lady who was a so-called sympathizer for the Germans during the Second World War, having her head shaved as a punishment. But I have a young lady friend who I know who lives near here, who looks exactly like this. Her hair is very short, and the tortures of one generation readily become the fashions of another. A strange world, isn't it? Anyway, I hope I don't sound like a bleeding heart, but this woman looks very sweet to me. But where is the love? And there is another photo, young Dutch girls dancing on the beach in clogs. A very moving photo. Each culture has a different way of dressing, a different way of talking, and a different way of feeling. They actually feel different things. They develop a certain sense of life and share it amongst themselves. Europe is particularly rich with many cultures each living in their own nations. And it's devastating to see so many invading people destroying it all. Many of the most powerful people on the planet today are emptier and stupider than you can imagine. The destructuring of society has allowed pure filth that you can scrape off the pavement to take positions of power in this world. Their views and opinions change like the wind. Somebody gives them some lines, and a minute later gives them some other lines. Inside they're dead. It reminds me of a clip from Airplane. This bullet just handed to me. Stricken airliner approaching Chicago. Oh, you are Israel. News no jik kan des. Uda hatsu ga tsutaimasu. Head the striker. I learned this week that 850,000 years ago, there were men in Britain. About 10 years ago, the tide was out on the east coast of Britain in a place called Norfolk, and some unusual sedimentary layers were visible, and on them footprints. Scientists rushed down and recorded as much as they could before they were washed away. They were very ancient, 850,000 years dated three ways, by strata identification, by the teeth of small animals, voles, and also by pollen, so it seems that that's a reasonable number. It's such a long time. If we are concerned with Atlantis, maybe 10 or 15,000 years ago, what does it mean that people walked here, lived here, had families here such a long time ago? Perhaps it means that our practice should be long, slow, and deep, just like life is. Anything else will be blown away. And those feelings that the Dutch girls felt, that real living, which comes from the earth, through them, through their families, through their lives, that is what God wants. That is the real work. That is the real work. When your life is natural and full of love, that is what God wants. Everything else we make today means nothing to him. It's all garbage. Julius Evola says that to know according to wisdom does not mean to think, but to be the thing known, to live it, to realize it inwardly. One does not really know a thing, until one can actively transform one's consciousness into it. Well, today things are different. You are what you do. People make vacuum cleaners, and they become vacuum cleaners. Outside of themselves, they have appliances, and they have turned their mind into an appliance. Most work today is not felt from the fingertips. 
It is just a procedure that you have copied. The path is full of sacrifice and you have to sacrifice all the shit and start making again the things that God values and that you value, if only you know yourself. So let's talk again about Do Re Mi, about points, about the transition, about the interfaces between the steps. Here we see a chimney on an old Victorian house in England. There are different materials here, can you see? The silver in the middle is lead, it joins the brick above to the clay tiles below. The three materials. And it's quite interesting to think abstractly about how one material flows into another. Bricks set in the sun and become like a stone that takes the weight of the house. Where the lead meets it, a line is chased into the brick, a trench, and the lead slides into it, female and male. But in order to keep it there, two things happen. First, a chock is made, which is a thin strip of lead rolled and rammed into that trench to prise the male into the female trench. And then the brick melts, it becomes a plaster, and that plaster fills the trench. Again, a male and a female. You could say that there is a double male-female pair there. Tiles are different. They are like plates and brittle. They cannot be chased. But where they meet the lead, the lead deforms and flows over the surface, hugging it tightly, and interleaves the tiles alternately. The join is less secure, but the lead becomes like a layer of tiles which in themselves work by overlapping each other and the water drips down like a waterfall. So what can we learn? Each material, each step has a completely different quality. Where they join together special things happen. Sometimes they mate male-female and sometimes one deforms to take on the characteristics of the next to assist the join. Gurdjieff talks of the moving center, the emotional center and the mental center. And when they meet each other, they must find a way to interface. This is from Spensky. I do not remember who was the first to speak of this transfiguration of G when we were left alone. And then it appeared that we had all seen it, though we had not all equally realized what it was while it was taking place. But all without exception had felt something out of the ordinary. G had explained to us earlier that if one mastered the art of plastics one could completely alter one's appearance. He had said that one could become beautiful or hideous, one could compel people to notice one, or one could become actually invisible. What was this? Perhaps it was a case of plastics. So then, let's work with the moving center. Some people notice their body, observe it, they feel it inside. That is not the moving center, that is the body. Even an animal, a chameleon sitting in a tree, can notice its body. That is not spiritual work. The moving center is something different. Now let's take cycling. Can you feel the gate, the moving machine, what it does and what it's trying to do? On a sunny day, you feel happy, when it rains, you feel sad, those are feelings. Let's put them aside for now. We're looking at the moving center. 
There is a rhythm, a meaning, a power. If you mull it over and drift inside, perhaps you can see something. You can see that there is an actual mind, a type of mind that is doing it. When you drift, you can see things inside, but it is like going through the clouds. Sometimes you catch sight of it and then it's gone. It takes many turns and much time, checking and checking again to make sure you see it clearly. Slowly, like playing an instrument, your intelligence becomes tuned to capturing the mind that is moving. And only then can you talk about the moving center because you have seen it. The body is not the moving center. And once you see it, sense your foot at the same time. Is the moving center in the foot? Now sense your head. Is the moving center in the head? It will take time to develop the ability to notice where the moving center is because everything that we do and experience comes from a particular location in one of the bodies. Do you know where it is? Well, keep looking then. There is no shortcut to evolution. It takes time. In any attempt to make that time shorter, you just rob from yourself. It's not like that. These subjects are very secret and beyond the ability or interest of almost everybody on the planet. But for some, it is a great elation. If you can localize the moving center, then maybe you can as if merge with it somewhat. So you have more the sense of being inside. Who knows what people could do in ancient days? There are many legends. Man, as we find him today, is simply an animal. All he knows is just what an animal knows. When I take the host on Sunday, I've created a new ritual. I kneel once before the priest, just in front of him, and make a large cross, like two bows. And then I accept the host and with the host in my hand, I make a second cross, and then I consume it. And then I make a third, and the octave is complete. There are many things that need to be brought back to life. And it's always like that, as this planet likes to sleep and likes to dream.